Hello you guys, last year I showed you guys how to crochet this rose along with the two little green leaves and in that video I was wearing this crochet hat and I received so many requests to show you guys how to crochet it and I'm so glad that I finally got a chance to make a video on it. It's really quick and easy. So in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to crochet the beret hat in the description section. I'll also paste a link to how to crochet the rose along with the two little leaves. It's a quick easy project. Let's get started. For this project you're going to need a yarn color of your choice, a pair of scissors, a crochet hook, and it's optional a safety pin. This is the crochet hook size I'll be using. What I'm going to do is leave a little tail behind and I'm going to begin over this area. I'm going to get my crochet hook, cause a little bit of pressure, twist it, and then rotate it all the way around. And with this hand I'm going to hold on to the short little tail. And with this other hand I'm going to be pulling the main source of yarn. So I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through that first stitch. So here I have two and I'm going to make a chain of five. Three, four, and five. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to a little circle and I'm going to bring the crochet hook into the first stitch. So I'm just going to bring it in there, grab that main source of yarn and bring it in through that first stitch. So there I have two little loops. Now I'm going to put this little loop into that little loop. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and I'm going to go in twice into each of the stitches. So here's the first time I'm going to end it with a single stitch. The second time I go into the same stitch I'm going to end it with one little stitch two little stitches. So I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch, grab that yarn, bring it in, there's my three little loops. Now I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. And I'm going to end it with a single little stitch. Now I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the same stitch for a second time, grab that yarn, bring it in through that same stitch, there's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the three little loops, and the second time I'm going to end with two stitches. There's one and two. So I'm just going to continue doing this all around my first row. I just finished my first round. What I like to do here is optional. I like to get a safety pin and I place the little head of the safety pin towards the area where I'm going to be, where I began the project. So I know this way that every time I pass the little head of the safety pin I'm ending a row and beginning a new one. Now this second row is very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch and I'm going to be going into each of the stitches left behind by row one. I'm going to grab that yarn, bring it in through that stitch. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. Now what I'm going to do is each time I'm going to be ending with two little stitches, two little loops. I'm counting this one as one and two. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and go into the following stitch. Grab that yarn, bring it in through that stitch. There's again my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the three little loops and again ending with two little stitches. This one counts as one and two. So it's very simple. This is what I'm going to continue doing all around row two. I'm ending row two beginning row three. I know because I'm passing the little head of the safety pin. So row three is going to be very simple. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go in once into each of the stitches, grab that yarn. There's my three loops. Wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three loops. That's it. Next I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch. There's my three loops, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three loops. And again just continue this process all around row three. I've ended row three, I'm beginning row four and for row four what I'm going to be doing to each of the stitches is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the stitch, grab that yarn, and there's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the three little loops and end it with two little stitches, two little loops. I'm counting this one as one and two. So basically I'm going to be doing the same exact thing to every stitch left behind by row three. 
and I'm going to be doing this all around row 4. I've just ended row 4, I'm beginning row 5. What I'm going to be doing to each of the stitches left behind by row 4 is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it into each of the stitches once, grab that yarn, there's my three loops, and I'm just going to be wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, bringing it in through the three loops, and ending it just with a single stitch. Again, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch, and basically continue doing the same thing all around row 5. I'm ending row 5, beginning row 6. What I'm going to be doing all around row 6 is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the stitch, grab that yarn, pull it in through that stitch. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, place it in through the three little loops, and I'm going to be ending it with two little loops. This one counts as one, and there's the second one. Now the second time I go in, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the following stitch, grab that yarn, bring it in through that stitch, there's my three little loops, and the second time I'm going to be ending just with a single little loop. The third time I'm going to follow the same pattern, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the following stitch, pull it through that stitch, there's my three loops, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the three little loops, and ending it with two little loops. This one counts as one, two, the following one, I'm going to be ending just with a single little loop, and then I'm just going to continue this pattern. I'm ending row 6, beginning row 7. What I'm going to do to each of the stitches left behind by row 6 is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the stitch, grab that yarn, there's my three loops, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the three little loops, ending it with a single little loop. And I'm just going to be doing this all around row 7. I'm ending row 7, beginning row 8. For row 8, we're going to do the same exact thing we did for row 6. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the three little loops. And the first time, I'm going to be ending with two little stitches, two little loops. This one I'm counting as one, two. Now the following time, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch, and I'm just going to be ending with a single little loop. The third time, I'm just going to continue this same pattern. I'm going to be ending with two little loops. The fourth time, I'm going to be ending with just a single little loop. And I'm just going to continue this pattern all around row 8. I just finished row 8. Now for row 9 and row 10, I'm going to be doing the same exact thing. I'm just going to be wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going in once to every stitch left behind by the previous row. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops, ending with a single stitch every time. So I'm just going to continue doing this all around row 9 and row 10. Here's what the top of your hat should look like once you're done with your 10 rows. Now starting row 11 is going to be our first tightening row. We're going to begin tightening little by little. For row 11, what I'm going to be doing all around is following this pattern. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in through the stitch, grab that yarn, and very simply just bring it in the same way we've been doing. So I'm going to go in to three of my stitches exactly the same way. And here's my third one. Now the fourth one, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, bring it in, through the stitch, grab that yarn, again go into the following stitch, grab that yarn, and there I have four little loops. Now I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the four little loops. So this is basically the pattern I'm going to be following. The following three stitches, I'm just going to be going in once. Now the fourth, I'm going to grab that yarn, bring it in, and the fifth, grab that yarn, bring it in. There's my four little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the four. So I'm just going to continue this pattern all around row 11. I just finished row 11. I'm about to begin row 12. What I'm going to be doing all around row 12 is also following a pattern. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go in once, again to the second stitch, going on once, now to the third and to the fourth stitch, 
I'm gonna be going in and there's my four little loops. I'm gonna wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through to the four little loops. So again, I'm gonna follow the pattern of going in once to the following stitch, once to stitch number two. Now to stitch number three and four, I'm gonna wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go in to stitch three, grab that yarn, bring it in through stitch three, go directly into stitch four, grab that yarn and there's my four little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the four little loops. And I'm just going to continue with this pattern all around row 12. As you can see after finalizing row 12, the hat began scooping inward. This is because of the two tightening rows we just worked on. Now if you're going to want to add a second tone color, this is the time to add it before beginning row 13. To add the second color, I'm just going to make my loop bigger and I'm just going to cut around this area. Now I'm going to align the second tone color I'm going to be using and wrap it around my finger creating a loop. Now in between this loop I'm going to grab the two little colors, bring them in through that little loop and I'm just going to pull. And with these two little ends I'm just going to make a little knot. Now I'm just going to cut the two little tails. Once you've binded together your two tones in the same color, it's time to begin row 13. Very simply, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, place it in through the stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch, and just continue with the same pattern all around row 13. I just finished row 13, I'm about to begin row 14, but I wanted to show you guys the unleveling of the two tones. So this is where you'd be adding the flower later on. I'm going to be wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook for row 14. I'm going to be placing it into the stitch, grabbing that yarn, there's my three loops, wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook and going in through the three loops. And I'm going to be doing this six times. Now the seventh time I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go in through the seventh stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through, go directly in to stitch eight, grab that yarn, bring it in through, there's my four loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three loops. So I'm just going to continue this pattern. I'm going to go in to the following six. Now for the seventh, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go in to the seventh, grab that yarn, pull it through. I'm going to go directly into stitch number eight, grab that yarn, pull it through. There's my four little loops. Wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in. So I'm just going to continue with this pattern all around row 14. I've just completed row 14. I'm about to begin row 15. What I'm going to be doing to each of the stitches left behind by row 14 is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go in once, pull the yarn through. There's my three loops. Wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three loops, ending it with a single stitch. And I'm just going to be doing this all around row 15. I just ended row 15. I'm about to begin row 16. It's basically going to be the same exact thing we did for row 14. I'm going to go in to the six stitches. There's one, Now the following two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook. I'm going to go into stitch seven, grab that yarn, pull it through, and I'm going to go directly into number eight, grab that yarn, pull it through. There's my four little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in. So again, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following six stitches, and just continue on with the same pattern. I've just completed row 16. I'm about to begin row 17, which is the last one. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, going once to every stitch left behind by row 16. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. So I'm just going to continue doing this all around our last row 17. I've just completed my final row 17. What I'm going to do to finalize my hat is I'm not going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook. I'm going to go directly into the following stitch, grab that yarn, and pull it through the last stitch. 
So now I'm going to flip it to the back. Once you've flipped your little hat to the back side, what you're going to do is you're going to find any stitch of your choice, pull your crochet hook in through there, grab the yarn and bring it in through there and now just bring it in to the last little stitch. And you're going to pull it and now you're just going to cut this area and make a knot. Or you can also finish off your project however you'd like. Now I'm just going to take my scissors and clip off the little tails. So this is the inside part of the hat and that's what it's going to look like on the outside part. We left the little tail behind in the center of the hat. I'm going to finish it off the same exact way I finished off the project. It's up to you to decide how you want to finish off your project. Um, but I've never had any problems just finishing off with a knot. So that's how I always choose to end my projects. But remember, it's your choice. So this is what your hat should look like from the outer part and this is what it looks like from the inside part. Now this is the area where we're going to be sewing on the rows along with the two little green leaves. What I like to do is I like to sew on one of the leaves coming in sideways and then I take my other leaf and I also sew it in coming in sideways, leaving a space in between so that I can sew the rows in that area. So now I take my rose and I sew it on over that area just using regular thread in similar color to the leaves. For example, I use a light green color and then for the rose, a uh, lavender color. But basically that's it. This is a very easy rose and leaves project to create. I will be pasting the link in the information bar so you guys could finish off your little hat with this rose and the two little leaves. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and really give these beret hats a try. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye!